What did I get for that money? What do you actually get for that save? Well, the first thing you get, as I mentioned before, is profile. Because in 24 months, people can't remember your name. But they can remember you're a Jim's handyman. They call the 0800 number and they go, oh, we see you're Joel's customer. Oh, that's right. That was his name. Can you send him back? It's people being able to find you in the first place by being at the top of Google. It's people being able to retain you. And also when you roll down the driveway, your van matches your uniform, matches your card, matches your software, matches your email address. You're the professional. You're the one who's come prepared and marketed properly. There's a massive company behind you. You just called 0800 454 654 for all this. Probably the difference with gyms than any other is the fixed fees. The bigger you grow, you don't pay us more money. That's all you. We give you the tools and the resources and we essentially ensure your success, which is, as you know, we've been doing for a long time. So welcome today to Robert Young. Now Robert's back again. So Robert's been leading the great big New Zealand. He's a, he's a frag goes off multiple years for us. With Jim's a handyman, fencing, painting. What else are you uh, building maintenance as well? What else is there, Robert? You're, you're leading in New Zealand. Basically all the trades. So uh, so handyman, building and maintenance, yep. which is handyman for qualified builders, fencing, painting and roofing. Everything. So he's a man of many talents and he's doing a great job in growing the divisions there. Now, today we've got you want to talk about Wellington in particular because obviously in Auckland you've done some amazing things with the growth with Hedy It's been quite remarkable to see how you've grown that so quickly and you've done a lot of work for the guys. There's obviously other parts of New Zealand where you can expand to. So maybe just talk about today about the opportunity in Wellington and, and what would you sort of say to people might be looking at the opportunity? Um, so we commenced, uh, got our first franchise in the ground exactly three years ago today in Auckland and now we have 30 businesses and we're by far the market leader. So our attention turns to Wellington, and in Wellington District, uh, what I'm talking about is basically Upper Hutt, round up the Kapiti Coast and everything in between. There's enormous opportunities in Wellington because of what the houses are made out of, the geography of the place. I mean, even in Auckland, we have a small storm, and there's plenty of work preparing uh, bits and pieces for people with fences and so on. Well, Wellington get it 10 times as worse, and there's more per capita bungalows and villas and all these sort of wooden, remu, kauri, traditional uh, Kiwi architecture that needs a lot of good quality maintenance that is not quite as simple as on the new houses, which everything's just right angles. So there's an enormous opportunity in Wellington. And from what I can ascertain, no one's a market leader down there. There's a bunch of small, a few little small groups of people, but no one really dominates the thinking like we do in Auckland now. I mean, most of the guys in Auckland, I would, you know, and anyone who's looking to join in Wellington can, can talk to the guys in, in Auckland about this. Only about half the team even need leads anymore because the brand's so recognisable and there's so much repeat work. It very quickly feeds on itself um, just by simply having top of mind share that people know you're there. And that's what we need to get to the same stage in Wellington. It'll probably take about 18 months. But as people who are applying in Auckland now are finding out, it's too late, right? Because like in Auckland, I get inquiries all the time and it's pretty much just builders now. And um, I've got no more territories sold out, which of course makes the territories that the guys have bought as worth more. Because of course, like anything, uh, supply and demand, it is now demand but no supply. So that can only be a good thing for the people that own the, the thing that's in short supply. And we want to do the same thing in Wellington. It'll take about 18 months, I think, from from now when we're, we're just starting now. We already appointed one guy in Lower Hutt just as a, a um, fill out the market and make sure we've got the marketing mix right and so on and so forth. So he's actually commenced and, uh, and doing well. But what we need to find is at least another 10 business owners uh, in the next 12 months down there. Now, with um, uh, Wellington, there's already had some unserviced leads there. So maybe we're going to talk about, is there already, even though we're not advertising there, so is there unserviced work coming through there already? Well, we don't, yeah, there is, but we don't actually advertise half a week. Yeah. We only just started when Louis, who's the, the guy in Wellington, the first business owner in Wellington in the hut, we've only just started advertising, but we were getting leads there, maybe, I don't know, 10 to 20 a month, but they were just super random because we're not actually advertising there. Mm. So that was people finding out us with no advertising. So when we turn on those postcodes, right, we want to work in this post, you know, the upper hut, lower hut uh, postcodes, for example, we turn them on. You know, it's always the Google AdWords that where all the work comes from. And we have about key, uh, 40 keywords and phrases and people search them. And it's the ratio of times we appear at the top of that list. There's lots of other stuff we do, but that's where the work comes from. And an independent just can't compete with our Google position because because Jim's is such a big business, we already start from here and we have to pay to go to the top of Google here. But if you're an independent, you gotta start down here somewhere to pay all the way up here. And there's just no way you can do it. So as the all markets consolidate uh, in business, I think you've got to be, especially in a in a population centre like Wellington, you've got to be with a brand if you want to generate new customers and you want to actually grow a business. 
if you just want to operate as just a, a one-man band, it takes you about two years to accumulate enough customers if you can survive. With us, that's just the first step. And also, the um, you know, people, when they see the name of the search results, obviously, Jim Moen's been a big brand for 30 years, but obviously, they're no handyman more now. It just gives you instant more credibility. They don't have to look at the website and read reviews and all that sort of stuff. They'll know the word gyms, I understand, that gives you more trust and credibility, high click-through rate, way more certainty than if you're an independent brand, but they don't know who you are. Like Dan's Handyman, for example, they've got to then try and read reviews and suss you out and then they might go to somewhere else. So it just gives you such a more convertible conversion perspective as you know from your franchisee, such a better chance. Well, the quality of the inquiries is obviously the, the first hurdle. We get a lot of inquiries from people who um, don't have the necessary experience and, the, and that leads to why the customers trust us is because we don't give a franchise to just anyone who's got the cash. You've got to have two main attributes. One of them is you've got to have a skills just dead. So that's just a given, right? You're either a qualified builder or you've been doing it for 10 years and you're just one of those people. You know, the philosophy with handyman is you either are one or you're not. There's no making one. You either grew up this way, you're either a proper tool person or you're not. So you've got to have that. That's just a given. Anyone below the standard I've just explained, I quickly tell them, look, I'd be just wasting your mind. Have you, have you thought about mowing and landscaping? Usually I call it the gyms.net chat. When they can't do handyman, I start talking about gyms.net and starting there and finding something that plays to their strengths, not their weaknesses. So the other side of it, the second thing you need, though, if you're going to be a gyms franchisee, is you've got to have business acumen, right? You've got to, you've got to be someone who can conduct a professional discussion with a customer, engage in our professional systems, maintain our professional standards, and the customers are quickly learning about these things, and therefore we've become, in Auckland already, the safe harbour, because you can go on the free bidding platforms where you can get three or four quotes and um, you take what you get. But if you want it done properly and you want to really diminish your risk, you just get proven, tested, and Jim's is behind every franchisee, of course, and you know how much we're into the complaint management process is a massive part of our business because our reputation is everything. And uh, and the, the the market in Auckland know that now, and we, ju- we need to bring that to Wellington. And when you become the trusted source, uh, you get less, and you can still get some, but you get less quotes, which is how cheap can I get this? The quotes that we tend to attract are more, I need this done properly. Not to be sure it's done properly. Like if you've got a leaky villa, the ramifications can be massive. You better get the right person in there really. So we get a lot of that maintenance work, windows, doors, you know, all these little niggles uh, with moisture and wood houses. So we, we're really competent at these things. And it makes a big difference because if they get out of hand, it will start affecting the value of your home. I was going to say as well, Robert, so for anyone who doesn't know, what's the offering for Wellington? So you obviously want qualified people, you want you know, chibis or you want people who've been on for 10 years. So what's, and what do they get for their money? So they want to buy the franchise, they like the sound of this. What do you actually get for that? So can you actually explain it to them all about it? Well, the first thing you get, as I mentioned before, is profile. You know, people need to be able to find you. Even, uh, I'll give you one small example, even, you know, we get a much higher retention rate because in 24 months, people can't remember your name but they can remember you're a Jim's handyman. They call the 0800 number and they go, oh, we see you're Joel's customer. Oh, that's right. That, that was his name. Can you send him back? You know, so it's a, it's not, I don't think there's one silver bullet. It's all a series of things. It's people being able to find you in the first place by being at the top of Google. It's people being able to retain you. And also when you roll down the driveway, your van matches your uniform, matches your card, matches your software, matches your email address. You're the professional, right? You're the one who's come prepared and marketed properly. There's a massive company behind you. Can you organise someone to mow my lawns? Sure. I need my electronics tested and tagged. I need my dog washed. Yep, we can do all that stuff. You just call 0800 454 654 for all this. Now, when people um, have the brand and we're the handyman brand or the building and maintenance brand, which is just for qualified builders, it immediately moves you out of the who the hell is this guy category. And there's plenty of platforms and people like that now, which are just individuals and no one's ever heard of you. They don't know you, right? But it's... When you roll up with a brand, you've got a, you've got a lot of established trust from the standards we've maintained over the decades. You roll down the driveway with that. You roll down the driveway with our warranty. You're part of a team, right? One of the things I like is being part of a team is important, but you get that with any good franchise, right? You always get that. Probably the difference with gyms than any other is the fixed fees. So the harder you work, you don't pay us more money. The bigger you grow, you don't pay us more money. That's all you. We give you the tools and the resources and we essentially ensure your success, which is, as you know, we've been doing for a long time. The way I look at it, if you if you get on board with us, you're moving your business forward two, three years, day one. People can find you. 
They can retain you. You, you, you're professional, you're elevated. People recognize you as such from the branding that you're competent. You can start quoting at a, at a quality level instead of just being, I just need this desperation business on the open bidding platforms just to race to be the cheapest. You know, a lead that comes through us only goes to one franchisee. So it's between you and the customer. Um, I'll coach these people on how to sell because often proper handy people and builders, and they can have great business acumen and very clever people and very professional, but they've never really sold. And, you know, selling isn't what people who haven't done it before think it is. You know, it's it's basically teaching people to, to live in questions so that we find out properly what the customer really wants, then we can give it to them. And that's what selling is, right? Understanding what the customer really wants before you start going on about what you're going to do. So um, there's all that business coaching and sales coaching is usually a big part of it. Financial coaching, uh, the software, the systems, the emails. When you open up on day one, I'll have you standing in a uniform, business cards in your pocket, signed written vehicle, software on your handset, and you're ready to rock and roll and receive leads and start quoting, doing, getting paid, quoting, doing, getting paid. And that goes round to the fixed fees. You bill the customer, the customer pays you. Because we don't take a percentage, because we don't take a royalty, because we don't take a commission, we don't need to get between them and the customer. The customer is truly theirs. And therefore, that leads to you work the way you want. I don't have a financial interest if they work 20 hours a week or 70 hours a week. I only have a financial interest that they're happy. So that completely transforms the, the, the how I talk to them and what we talk about. Because all we ever talk about is, Joel, what do you actually want? Okay, well, let's talk about how to get that. And I don't have a horse in the race financially, whereas if I was taking a percentage, I'm like, come on, Joel, work harder, work more hours. Don't you want to be a millionaire and all that rubbish? And giving you a carrot, oh, yeah, work harder and a stick. Come on, man, you you got to have this budget. you got to charge this price. Well, we don't have to get involved in any of that. And that's super important in handyman because a real handyman and a qualified, experienced builder do not need me as their new boss. And that's the last thing they want. The reason they want their own business is so that they can be free and run their own diaries and start at nine because they want to take the kids to school. Whatever it is, I don't work Saturdays because I play golf. Whatever, it's up to you. That's what they want. So if they shift to a percentage-based system, that's not what they get. They just get a different type of boss. And because you don't get there with us, the, the tradies, the guys that are with me, they love it. It really lends itself to, to this service so well. So, uh, yeah, so they, they, for all these reasons is why we need to find about about 10 business owners in Wellington, and then that's Wellington. And I'd say, yeah, I'd say to everyone as well, watch, um, watch some of the YouTube videos we've done, not only, Robert, with your franchisees as well. No, there's a pretty long form ones we've done that gives you a really good indication of what the franchisees think as well. Not only from Robert's perspective, but from the franchisees' perspective, I reckon it's really worth checking out as well. Do you want to just talk about the training component real quickly, Robert? How do they do the training and what's the point of the training and what's your opinion on it? So the induction training is they can come to Auckland every six weeks or Australia every three weeks. I mean, the fact that we train about 120 people every three weeks just blows my mind. And that's just induction training. Incredible. So they can go to Melbourne if they wish. I, I usually leave it up to the franchisee what's convenient for them and what works for them. The benefit of the Auckland training is it's very Kiwi-centric. The benefit of the Australian t- uh, training is you get to meet you, you get to meet Jim. You see the call center, you see the head office, you get to meet all the people you you, you have in your... Because when you join, you know, the, the document department, the finance department, the IT department, these all become those departments of my business. So it's great to meet all those people. And also to be in that, uh, you know, where you guys do the training with 120 people. I mean, the whole thing is amazing fun. We're in Auckland, we're in a very nice hotel, the food's excellent as well. And people say they really like that and it's more Kiwi focused. So pros and cons, but they're both excellent quality. You know, 90% of the content's exactly the same and the yeah. team come over from Australia and do a great job. So the induction training is over three days. You stay there, your food's covered, your flights are covered inside, uh, everything's included. You learn how the gym's way. So everything we've learned the last 30 years, we teach you. And uh, we know what works and what doesn't work in local area marketing, for example. So we teach you what we know so that you know. And we, you know, the th- five, over 5,000 franchisees in 30 years, we've learned one or two things. And I would say to people uh, when they join us, look, for the first six months, just do what it says uh, in training. And then in six months, when you've really got up to a good beat and you've really got everything worked out, then we'll talk about how you want to make the business. What what sort of business do you want? Whether you want to grow an empire or you want to maintain a real nice lifestyle and just do your own hours and look after yourself and no one else. I get that. And then other people want to build a, uh, an empire. So the training is useful to both parties, both type of people or somewhere in between. And I'll help you do it because all you've got to do when you join gyms is do what it says in the training for the first six months and you'll be just fine. 
Because day one, as I said before, it's it's basically taking you two years into the future if you were to start privately. You've already got momentum. You're already known by the market. The phone is ringing already. The marketing's all in place. Your website's done. Your CRM software's in place. Your email works. You know, when you start a new business, all these things become major problems and hassles and can take you six months. So um, the induction training is how to use that software, how to engage with all these different resources and make the most of them. How to, how to, what to do when you're out and about in your, in your community to make sure that your success is assured by us. Uh, do you want to talk about the, um, the income or the paid work guarantee? So people might have seen the added and quiet if you watching this video. Be going, well, what's the income guarantee or the paid work guarantee? Can you explain how that works well? The paid for work guarantee gives you a minimum turnover per month. We don't pay people to sit on their backside. You've basically got to be out doing all the things you should be doing anyway. Uh, and if you're doing the right things, like getting around your community, do free quotes for people, then a pay for work guarantee guarantees a minimum turnover, so it takes care of your fees and also gives you a bit of pocket money. But I always refer to it as Jim's um, work and income because that's like the minimum, like it, that's surviving money, right? What I prefer to do, and I own this territory, so I get to decide these things. What I prefer to do is to spend the money I would on pay for work guarantee down here. I spend it up here. On generating enough leads so that they need it because pay for work guarantee is there as a safety net but what's much more gratifying is starting and having enough leads and making enough money that you don't need it gives a person a lot more pride a lot more positivity than sort of claiming a handout right the the, the I, I prefer to spend it up here i'm i like i'm prepared to risk when I, I my first guy i put into wellington right now i'm spending more than he's paying me in fees total in marketing to get him going because you've just got to get these guys successful so that the second person who responds to this video, the third, the fourth, the sixth, that on it goes, and remember we've just done this in Auckland, they've got to be able to talk to him and he's going to say, oh, there's not been any leads. I've got this pay for work guarantee thing, but um, you know, I'm not doing very well. Or, oh man, I've got so much leads, I'm run off. Do you know anyone who can help me? Oh man, I'm joining this franchise, right? He's got plenty of work. So the investment I'm making is not just in the ind individual franchisee, I'm investing in who's in the business in three months, right? I'm always thinking, where, so in three months, I'll have easily three, four people in Wellington, right? So I'm marketing for keep those people busy. So the one person that's there who's just started, you know, just away on the wave straight off the bat. So that's how I deal with generating work and how I think about pay for work guarantee. But for the franchisee, there is a safety net there, and that's, that's important to know as well. And Jim talks about it freely on YouTube. One of the great things I think about uh, looking at Jim's as a franchise is we don't say anything that's not freely available publicly all the time on Facebook because we're so big you can't keep a secret. So you might as well just tell the world how the system works because no one can really, yeah, oh, I'm going to copy Jim then. Oh, well, good on you. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, you should. This is probably right. Said it's fear. Yeah, this isn't fear. That's why it works. So you yeah, go right ahead. Uh, we've got a Gyms Group New Zealand YouTube channel and the Gyms Group YouTube channel Australia around 2,000 videos. So yeah, we try and be more transparent about it. And I was going to give you a bit of, I'm going to give you a bit of a up, up Robert, because I think people should know. So for those who don't know, Gyms has been in New Zealand for around 30 years. It's been mainly Gyms mowing. I went over there for the logo to this, you know, oh, 30, yeah. Yeah, about 30 years, I think. But yeah, yeah. I think, how many franchises do you have now? You've got more than 40 at least, or how many do you have? Um, I've got I've got thirty in the North Island yeah. of hand, handyman building and maintenance, and another six in the South Island. Then a couple of fencing, and what are we up to? We only started painting this year, and we're up to six. And then we started roofing about six weeks ago, and we've got two. So Robert, so for those who don't know, so cleaning and test and tag have always been the second biggest divisions in New Zealand, and because that's just because they've been there for a long time and they've translated well over. Good business, super, but. What you've done in terms of your numbers in a really short amount of time, I think you're the biggest, second biggest. You are, you would be the second biggest, nearly biggest franchise all now in New Zealand in a really short amount of time, which means from our perspective that Robert's out the power to keep his franchises happy, which is another one thing. Also generate a amount of a large amount of work, but also provide that support. So from our perspective, I've been in gyms for 13 years. Robert's done an amazing job because um, New Zealand's always been a sleeping giant, we thought, because the culture is very similar. We just haven't had people to drive it. So for us, from our perspective, getting good people like Robert in place and grows these divisions, and what, what you've done is amazing, Rob, is you've done it in a division which are a bit harder to sell because you need more skills to be a handyman as opposed to do mowing or to be cleaning, for example. But to be to that, your actual growth is outstrips those divisions. So for anyone watching, Robert knows what he's talking about. He's done a fantastic job, and to have so many franchisees doing well financially is a massive credit to you. And if you are a prospect thinking about taking the head office position, well, it's a very good man to invest with.
Thanks, Phil. Yep. Well, so far, so good, eh? The, um, <laughs> well, one thing I have learned, and I'd speak directly to that to the people watching this video, uh, considering uh, giving us a call. What I find is the perfect person is not only this is what they do. You know, it's almost like who they are. This is what this is what they do. Now, I've had a couple of people who've come in from one exception. Uh, he came from a corporate background. He had about a hundred staff. He was MD of a business, and he's very happy. He's loving it because it was all about de-stressing and, uh, and and de-stressing. Really, he'd, he'd been in this high-stress corporate environment. He's so he's loving it. L- lives in a beautiful part of Auckland, cruising around, helping people. He loves it, and his customers love him. But the people, uh, he'd be the exception. Nearly all the guys are qualified builders or just handymen through and through. You know, this is what they do, and that's got as much to do with them being happy as anything. Because if you just do it from an entrepreneurial point of view, I, I think like anything, it's like what you do. You know, you're really into this digital stuff. You're really into your videos. You're really into the quality and you, you seem to really enjoy it. And that comes across in the quality of the stuff you turn out. And I think everything's like that. You know, so so the people that, that do it are people are talking directly to the people out there looking at this video. You know, if you if you want to spend your days helping people and doing jobs and uh, being out and about and running your own diary and uh, and actually being free, not not having a boss, but not being alone, then you know, give us a call because these territories are going to go. And I don't want to sound too sort of uh, come down by it now, but you know, I can't imagine they'll last more than eighteen months for sure. And I'd hope to get rid of all the best ones, you know, which always first in people pick the Vavonas and the places like this. You know, they'll go first. And what's the so, cost, Robert? Is it going to be the same cost per each territory? Are we going to adjust it, or what's the sort of cost? Well, I'm thinking about the price up again, actually. <laughs> no, so we'll just stick with the same pricing as always. So, so to, what, what I'll say is to get into it, what you need is an appropriate vehicle, which is not too junky, you look like a cowboy, and not yeah. too flashy, you look super expensive rolling down the driveway, something in the middle uh, that we can sign right. So an appropriate vehicle, your tools, and a 15 grand deposit. If you can put that together, you're ready to rock and roll. As long as you've got the skills and you can make the customer happy. Because making the customer happy is the number one thing that we want. We want from our franchisees, just keep your customers happy. Because that grows our reputation. Apart from that, franchisees can do whatever they want. Just keep yep. the customer happy. Now, probably if they want to inquire at a level with you directly, what do they need to do? Is there a number or they can call or an email or what would you like to do? I would say use the call center because, I, I mean, it, people resist this because people expect to be like ringing Vodafone or yeah. something. Um, <laughs> but... Um, but, you know, call the 0800 number, 0800 604 and be amazed how quickly it is answered. Be amazed by the fact that the English is the first language and they are actually inside the business, they actually understand what you're saying and understand your situation. They're not running strictly off a script. You know, the call, our call centre do it. I've run a call centre before. I used to be CEO of a business that had a large call centre attached to it. And, um, man, our call centre is unbelievable. So call the, call the 0800 number and explain what you're looking for. And if you're not going to join Handyman because you're not really skilled enough or you're not a qualified builder, there's always fencing, there's always a mowing and landscaping, you can't be that, the grass just keeps growing, right? If you're entrepreneurial, Jim's cleaning, right? Because cleaning isn't about cleaning, it's about selling and winning the contracts and then having your staff clean, right? So that's an that's an entrepreneurial division for me. So even if your handyman's a stretch, you can give me a call and have a chat and I'll put you in the right direction. And for those people who do have the skills, and the business acumen, they all, all, I get calls all the time, the wives and everyone, everyone really appreciates being able to have their own business, make good money, but not be under a ton of pressure. A good example of the gym's culture, right? Yeah, as you know, all discounts on suppliers come to the franchisees. That's almost unheard of in franchising. We don't take any cutbacks. We don't take any commissions, any retentions. Across the board, all supplier discounts come to the franchisees. And in handy, man, you'll save more on the product you'll supply to your customers, then your fees cost you. It's not a matter of money, right? It's it's a matter of success, right? It's a, it's a matter of, you put 10 or 15 or whatever the number ends up being, probably around 10 somewhere in Wellington, and they're just successful and you just leave them to it, right? It's, it, as long as the customer's happy, we're happy because as you know, Jim's is all about growth. It's not about, it's not just a sales machine and if you've got the money you're in. What we want to do as we've done in Australia is have unprecedented a reputation for quality and a safe pair of hands to call and get anything done. That's still two, three year plan, right? Because not just handy men, they need to call gyms if they want their dog groomed as well, right? If they want the roof fixed, if they want the landscape, if they want the trees falling, if they want the tree stuff to disappear and so on, you want the car groomed. So we're moving towards that. That's the bigger picture. And all the other franchisees just add to the reputation of your personal gyms handyman Karori 
you know, it all adds to your kudos and to you, the work that you get. And you're, you're part of this machine and this marketing machine at a Google and Facebook, Instagram level that you just got no chance of replicating as a private business person. No chance. Yeah, and if you're thinking about it, guys, it's getting quick because, as Robert said, there's only 10 territories available in Wellington. So make sure you're getting quick because um, they'll go like hotcakes. So make sure you have to think about it and wait six months. Get in now. Away we go. Thank you very much, Sad, Robert, for your time. And, um, Thank you, Joel. I, I, I do encourage people to go watching this. You know, I'm not just saying this is a word of head ops, but I've been to 13 years with gyms, and Robert's been absolute godsend for us in terms of New Zealand growth and what he's been doing. So you're buying into a really good... Um, person with a lot of experience who can help you out so and he's done it which is the main thing so thank you very much for your time but we appreciate it thanks joe thank you for listening to the episode of the gyms podcast if you want to learn more about the gyms group head to gyms.net or call us on 131 546 australia or 0800 454 654 new zealand and if you did like the episode as well please make sure you leave a review or a comment or a thumbs up or a comment on the video as well we appreciate your support and until next episode we hope you have a great week